Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny Program, with Jack's guest, Phil Harris. Brought to you by Lucky Strike. Get the genuine article. Get the honest taste of a Lucky Strike. The place, engine room. The cigarette, Lucky Strike. This man's brand because he wants the honest taste of fine tobacco. In Lucky's, he gets it. Sometimes a cigarette is your only companion. In that case, try Lucky Strike. It's mild, but not too mild, with a taste that's fresh, smooth, and unforgettable. Never was a man who could forget the taste of a genuine cigarette. Get the honest taste, the man that like the honest taste of a lucky strike. The honest taste of a lucky strike. Get the genuine article. Get the honest taste of a lucky strike. Well, you'll be on just a few minutes, boss. I know, I know. Are you nervous? No, no. Why should I be nervous? After all, this is my ninth year on television. That's right. Nine years. Just imagine, Rochester, nine years with Lucky Strike. <laughs> what are you laughing at? When your sponsor broke that mirror, he thought you'd only be off for selling. <laughs> we fooled him, little we? <laughs> one, one minute, one minute to air time. Oh, one minute. minute. Well, wish me luck. Good luck, boss. Okay. Good luck. Good luck, show now. Welcome to the Lucky Strike program. You know, I'd give anything in the world if today we were doing our program from New York, from New York City, you know, so I could see the World Series because I'm nuts about baseball. I'm a great baseball fan. Oh, I did make a bet on the series, you see, with Dennis Day on this World Series. And although I laid him nine to five, I still think I've got a good chance of winning. You see, because I took the Boston Braves, and he took the Los Angeles Dodgers. <laughs> you know, right now, he's sitting in the Coliseum all alone. <laughs> I wouldn't have even known about it, you see, except that he called me up to tell me that he sneaked in without a ticket. <laughs> but you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, two weeks ago, we did uh, our first program of the season, and naturally doing the first, oh, there's an audience, doing the, uh, <laughs> the first program of the season, naturally the shows were reviewed by all of the critics, and I have a couple of the reviews here that I would like to read to you. I'm not a ham or anything, but I would like to read these. One of them says here, after a summer of miserable television shows, Jack Benny started his. <laughs> started his season. <laughs> I thought Gary Cooper was wonderful on the Benny Show, and I think he deserves any salary the judge awards him. <laughs> and it goes on saying a lot of other nice things like that, you see. Then I have another review here that says, I always enjoy watching Mr. Benny because he's not only humorous oh. and oh, has anyone, but, but uh, you're Mr. Benny. Pardon? Uh, you're Mr. Benny. 
Yes, I yes. hope. Well, I hope I'm not late. No, no, who are you? Well, I was. Uh, the announcers' guild sent me over here. Oh, the announcers! <laughs> oh, oh, for heaven's sake, I forgot all about it. You know, ladies and gentlemen, Don Wilson also kept, couldn't be on this show because he's doing this big show, with this big play that's going to open in New York, and he's in Philadelphia right now. It's a big hit, you see. So he wanted to fly over and couldn't make it. So I called the announcers' guild, and they sent me over this gentleman, Mr. Mr. What is the name? Oh, it's Hunter. Elwood Hunter. Elwood Hunter. How do you do? How do you do? No, no, no. Why won't you? No, no, no. How do you do? Yes, I'll say. Well, and you're going to do a little commercial. A little commercial. Well, I guess I... Well, go right ahead. Don't be, don't be nervous. Thank you very much, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel that I owe an apology to someone because when I was given this assignment to come over here and do the Lucky Strike commercial, there was just one thing that I forgot to mention. I don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. So, no, that could be rather awkward. But I am an observant. I see. And being an observant, I, I've noticed that all my friends smoke Lucky Strike. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so being inquisitive as long as, as observant, if I asked them why, you know what? what? They told me. What? They said that they smoked Lucky Strikes because a Lucky is the genuine article. It's real tobacco. And it's no nonsense. No? <laughs> yeah, no nonsense. I gotta like that. I thought that was kind of cute. That's cute, yeah. <laughs> and there, was a, there was kind of another friend of mine who said he liked the honest taste of a Lucky Strike. And I kind of liked the group because that was strong, you see. And then there was another man. And he said that the minute he took out his package... Oh, well, naturally, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have any. You don't smoke, do you? Oh, well, here. Here. Oh, well, here's that. Right here. Just try one. I mean, that's it. That's oh, it. thank you very much. Don't be nervous lighting this thing. No, 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 no. You, you'll get, that's it. Don't, it's all right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 A friend of mine said that he got so much enjoyment out of the lecture. Say, this is good. <laughs> she is good. <laughs> yes. Well, one of my friends tell me that the lucky strike is mild, but not too much. No. <laughs> and they're unforgettable and all that. They're right, you know. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, there's just no doubt about it. Yes. <laughs> there's nothing like the honest taste of a lucky strike. Yeah, the honest taste. Oh, so, mm -hmm. I'm not going to give the rest of these bags. Oh, no, no. <laughs> That's nice. That was the most wonderful commercial, although when he first started, the first thing he said, I thought this would be our last show of the season. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, right now, I'm really quite thrilled when I present my guest star. Because even though he's been with me for maybe 20 years in radio, this is his first time with me on the Lucky Strike television show. First appearance in about nine years with me on the Lucky Strike show. And to me, he's without a doubt the most dynamic, the most scintillating... All right, you can save it, Jack. Save it. Relax, all you nice people. Because this show's gonna be all downhill. <laughs> Jackson, we don't need all them words. I mean, one picture is worth a thousand words, and I am a living Rembrandt. <laughs> hey, dolly in on me, Daddy, and let him see those love lines. I feel so firm. Right? It's like watching a tennis match. I Why prancing? I promised, on? Jackson. I promised I was going to do it, and I'm going to go through it. I mean, it. promise. Who, like who a, asked you to The promise. president of my fan club, Bridget Bardot. <laughs> Why I asked him ever to be on my show. Well, you asked me. You know why you asked me. Because the only reason that you want me on your show is because you know that I'm going to create an audience for you with the teenagers. That's why they follow me like the Pied Piper. You know why? Because I've got that beat. 
I don't know anything about a beat, but the last time I saw you rocking and rolling, it wasn't from music. <laughs> Listen, I'm so glad you got back from Palm Springs. Well, naturally, I mean, I'm going to tell you something. You mean to come in to do your show? Yeah. Well, certainly, you're a very lucky fellow, because for me to come in from that little spa in Rancho Mirage, it takes quite a caper. Oh, you like Palm Springs? Oh, I'm laid away real fine. <laughs> Ooh, cozy as a bear, plenty of <laughs> Nice little house, everything is lovely, all oh, got everything going, and you know, plenty of stuff. And every evening, all of the people come over, all of my friends, and then along about sundown, can you hear me, Jackson? Oh, <laughs> fortunately, yes. Uh, we, we make, along about sundown, we make with that fire. Oh, you have a barbecue. Ooh, and that fire is going all night long. <laughs> fire all night long? Uh, well, what do you do about charcoal, then? What charcoal? We burn corks. <laughs> I heard it. He's got the only barbecued chicken that gets off the grill and staggers to the plate. Touche. I saw you keep saying it. Where are you going? Hey, touche. What is that, touche? What, what's the matter? You think you're playing with kids? That's French. I know, Phil. I'm not dumb. I know touche is French. I know it's French. But what, what would you know about French? What would I know about French? I told you I'm down there. I got all that casual life and everything. I ain't got nothing to do with myself, you know. So I figured, well, I'm going to better myself. So I go to night school and out of the clear sky, south. French. Boo. Boo. <laughs> French. <laughs> You go to night school, you go to night school, and you take French lessons? Oui. And you speak? <laughs> I'm going like far with that French. I mean, you, you like, and you can really speak French. Speak you it learn? fluently. You can. Huh? Yes. All right, I want you to hear, I want to hear one word. I want to hear one sentence in French. Oh, you want me to give you, I just want to hear something you've learned in French. I'll do it for you. Here's a little something. I'll just come on with for openers. Right. <coughs> you... Manger du mai à la Hongrie. What does that mean? I sleep in the egg well. I mean, you sleep in a bed, on a sofa, on a couch. Till I learn them, I sleep in the ink. <laughs> that makes sense from a guy who's been under a hair dryer all day long. I can understand that. Well, look at Phil. I've got a lovely surprise for you. Oh, you I really have? Something? I got something. Oh, You're going to be thrilled with that. that. You're going to see your, all your old boys. Hey, look at that. That's Dad, right. Dad. Dad. Oh, my old guy. Fletcher, there's old Jimmy, there's old Wayne Mitchell. Hey, Sam! Hey, you're wearing that part way out this season, ain't you? You're coming on like a deacon. Oh, look, there's old Bagby over there. Wait a minute, just because I left, where's Frankie? Who? I'm talking about Frankie Remley. You ain't done nothing with him. Where is he? I want to see Frankie Remley. Here he is, right here. Where? Frankie Remley. This is Remley. Frankie. What have you been doing? You look off. <laughs> what? What's the matter? I stopped drinking. <laughs> when? <This> morning. <laughs> oh, well then you can still be saved. <laughs> there are you. Now you put the strings right back on there. Everything's going to be fine. See, Jackson, I'll start him back on light wines, and I'll give him some... Oh, yeah, well, that'll help. Yeah. Put him in a round oh, room. Oh, <laughs> that's... Yeah. You're going to be all right, Clyde. Yeah. I'll take you. <laughs> the, the clear, the clear on the end over there, you see, he had a little water on his coat and everything. Oh, yeah. He just swam over from Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> now, Phil, look, I didn't bring the boys out here just, you know, just for you to talk to them. Naturally, the audience are very anxious to hear you sing one of your songs. So how about putting one on? I got one, Jackson. They'll all love you. Okay, Ready? go ahead. Go ahead. Put
See my dear old mammy, she's frying eggs and frogging ham. That's what I like about the style. Now there you can. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Hold it! Hold it! Wait a minute! Hold it! What are you calling? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! What's the matter with you? You wouldn't stop Harley and his gypsies, would you? <laughs> well, listen, come here. Well, Papa, guy only got stars. Now wait a minute. You were with me in radio for 20 years. You sang That's What I Like About the South till it came out of my ears and everybody else. Well, I've got it right. Well, I wrote the number. You are? I'm the composer. You wrote the number. I wrote the number. Well, Phil, if I were you, Certainly. I wouldn't brag about it. <laughs> Those are the most ridiculous lyrics that I've ever heard in my whole life. Well, Jackson, I mean, gee whiz, I mean, uh, gosh, I'm, uh, I mean, you hurt me. I, I, I don't know well, what to I, say. Well, it's not you... only my opinion. I, I'll prove it to you. Those lyrics simply make no sense. I'll, I'll tell you what. You want me to prove it to you? You sing the song, and I'll leave it to the audience. I want him to hear these silly, ridiculous lyrics that, and that you wrote. I want to hear, I want you to hear these lyrics. You mean that you don't like the tune? Is that no, the idea? I don't like the you word. You wouldn't put a nickel in the jute box. No, there. I wouldn't put a nickel in the jute box. Come to think of it, you wouldn't put a nickel anywhere. But... <laughs> Alabama, let's go see my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and calling handy. That's what I like about the sun. Now, all right, now wait a minute. Hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it. Just one minute. Now, Phil, this part, up to now, I can understand. This makes a sense. You have a mammy. She lives in Alabama. She's just broiling ham and frying eggs. Whatever, frying eggs and uh, broiling you'll go along with it. Now, I'll go along with I mean, it. Up to, there, this, up to there, you're all right. This makes sense. This right. I'll believe. Right. Now, carry on. Carry well, on. there, you can make no mistake. You wear those nerves and never shake. You up to taste that leg cake. That's what I like about it. Stop. He, all right, all right. Hold it. Hold it. Just one minute. Just one minute. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, this part, I can understand a tiny bit. I can understand this a tiny bit. Somehow or other. Your mother in Alabama put baking soda on the ham and eggs, and out came a layer cake. <laughs> layer cakey. All right. <laughs> layer cakey. All right. Hold on. I just want to show you. I just want to Here show come you. old Bob with all the moves. Got the box back coat and the butt shoes. Buttons all cut up with his unit do So that's what I like about the time. Here come old Rob at down the street. Oh, what happened to Bob? Yeah, he was rapping his unit. That's what I like about the time. Did I tell you the place called Do I Did? But it ain't no town, it ain't no city. It's soft and small, but it's so pretty to see. Hold it, hold That's the one! That's the one! That's the one I was waiting for! That's the one I was waiting for! Hold it, everybody! That's the one I was waiting for! Now, wait a minute. That's the one I was waiting for. A little town called Do I Did? That's all you've been seeing, a town called Do I Did? I want to find out if there's such a time. Just one second. Will you lower this down, please? Just lower this down. That's right. Now, just stay at home. That's right. Now, Phil, here is the latest Rand McNally map of the United States. I want you to show me one place in this map where you can find a little town called Duwadin. I can see Walla Walla. I can see Ashtabula, Rockford, Illinois. I can see my hometown, Waukegan. Even Cotton Shoe, Texas. <laughs> but where in the name of I.W. Harper <laughs> can you, can you find... Jackson, I just told you, don't pay attention. I told you where it was. Where? Well, pay attention, I'll tell you again. <laughs> where those nerves and that shaky. And no, the lay of cakey, it ain't no town, it ain't no city, it's awful small, but awful pretty gonna do. Wow, did, did. Yeah, I don't want you to describe it. I merely wanted to tell me, is there such a place? Jackson, what do you think, I'm crazy? It ain't no fig leaf of my imagination. I wouldn't say... That's crazy. Crazy. Well, I don't care. I wouldn't say whatever it is. I wouldn't say... <laughs> Phil, wait a minute. All I, I... I merely want to ask you one question about this silly song. If do I did it, if it ain't no town and it ain't no city, all I'm begging of you is, what is it? Is it a hamlet? Is it a village? Is it a gas station? Is it a home for delinquent purple people eaters? <laughs> what is do I did it? I defy 
are you to answer? You know, I love you when you get mad like that. <laughs> you know, the blood is almost up to your chin. <laughs> Jack, it was right there. I don't there. care, we're not discussing my health. There's no town like do I Diddy. Those are the silliest lyrics I've ever heard. You're not going to sing it on my show. Well, Jackson, as long as I'm out here, I can't just stand around acting pretty unless you want me to do a little strip. I mean, I... No! <laughs> <laughs> All I want you to sing some other songs. Jack, I got a hundred songs. Well, let's sing a hundred. Sing want, that well, anything but do I Diddy. <laughs> Jackson was a poor old dub who joined the knockdown poker club, but he cursed the day, told him he was John. Money used to go like it had wings, a BL queen, someone at King's, and each night he would contribute all that cost. He said, I'm gonna play him tight tonight to be no bobtail blush and make me bite. He said, when I get in there, my hands don't be a beast. Played him tight and lost his pile, and Bill got beat after a while, so he rose, looked all around, and made this speech. Y'all see this razor, I had it sharpened just the day. Now, I'm coming in with my rules I want you to follow when you play boy. Keep your hands up on the table while you deep, please. Don't be putting them aces down there in between your knees. And don't be making them funny signs like you're trying to tip off your hand. Just keep talking in American voice so that uh, I can understand. And stop getting them off the cotton, because ooh, it's rough. Take five, five, then stop, that's enough. Now, when you back up the chips, because I don't like it when you shy. Then if you go bust it, go get something, I'm gonna be your by and by. Pass the cards, let me shuffle every time before you need. Let me look them over because I want to see. Because uh, I don't know nothing now about no Mr. Harley. You gonna play this game for me. Right there and that their clan, they chanced to be a one-eyed man and Bill kept on watching him out of the corner of his eye. No one-eyed dealing then, it cost that Bill another five or ten. Bill got up to get a little doll around him with his side. It's loud, it's awful, champ, that someone's cheating this year against the coast up. It ain't no do me to name the guy. So I'll refrain from mentioning the party's name. If I catch him cheating just once again, I'm gonna take his fist, clothes, and other eye. Now, do you see that brand new razor I had it sharpened just today? Now, I'm coming in with my rules that I want you to follow when you play Egghead. Keep your bony hands up there while you're giving them out, please. And don't be running them wildies down in there between your knees. And don't keep on making up funny signs. You're still trying to tip off your hands. You better talk an American boy, big AAA, so I can understand. And quit getting them off the bottom. I keep trying to tell you it's rough. It's the Army game, five, then halt. That's enough. Now, when you bet put up the reds and blues, I don't like it when you shack. Then if you run out of gas, go get pumped up. I'm gonna be here by and by. Pass them face boards and let me rip every time before you see. Let me hear a gate around with them, cause I love them. I mean, you ain't gonna play this game according to that Mr. Harley. You gonna play this game according to me. Now, Henry, if you break the seal on that new deck of bicycles, we'll get on from here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha! Get over that, Bill Harris. Imagine standing in front of millions of people, probably watching the show, singing this. Did you ever hear a town called Dua Diddy? <laughs> what lyrics? That other thing. Here come old Roy with all the news. Box that coat. <laughs> I mean, button shoes I can understand. I haven't worn a box back coat in five years. <laughs> Dua Diddy, there's no such town. Oh, hello, boy. Show though. I don't know, didn't you watch it? Well, I had to run down to the post office and get a package and I missed it. Oh, well, show It's a birthday it. present from my aunt. Oh, well, it's nice. Happy mm -hmm. birthday, Rochester. I forgot all about her. Gee, it's nice that your Aunt Alberta sent you a, a birthday present. Oh, no, no, no. This is for my Aunt Martha, the one that lives way down south. Oh, I didn't know you had another aunt. Mm -hmm. Down south, where does she live? Mm -hmm. Mississippi. Oh, yeah, what town? A little place called Doo Diddy. <laughs> A little place called what? Do what did he? Hmm. 
nothing, nothing. Well, it must be. Your blood is almost to your chin. <laughs> the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened. I wouldn't blame Phil Harris if he never talked to me again the rest of his life. Well, there's only one thing I can do. satisfying when it's followed by a good cigarette. That's Lucky Strike. Here's the honest taste of fine tobacco. With Luckies, you never get less. Smoke anywhere and you'll enjoy the cigarette of fine tobacco. Lucky Strike. The taste is honest. Fresh, smooth, unforgettable. Never was a man who could forget the taste of a genuine cigarette. Get the honest taste a man can like. The honest taste of a lucky strike. The honest taste of a lucky strike. Get the genuine article. Get the honest taste of a lucky strike. I'd like to bring out my guest, Phil Harris. It's wonderful being together again after all these years. Well, Jackson, I want to tell you, I got a big kick out of it. It was yeah. one of the most enjoyable benefits I've played all season. <laughs> <laughs> Say, they are good, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Good, good. yeah. But, Jackson, I want to tell you something sincerely. You do not look a day old. Well, that's awfully nice of you to say that, Phil. Nice, but difficult. <laughs> well, thanks, Phil. Very, very good. Jackson, very. have me back again. I, I will. will. I love you. All right. <laughs> you know, this show doesn't need a contract. It needs a liquor license. <laughs> Sure and watch uh, Bachelor Father next week with John Forsythe. And I'll be back in two weeks from today when my guests will be Dennis Day and then Jan and Arnie, those two recording artists, and then Marvin, the millionaire Miller, will be with us. So be sure to watch the show and thank you very much. Appearing on tonight's program is Howard McNeil. Remember, one week from tonight on the same station, be sure to do that.